Welcome to Veterinary Anesthesia Part 3. This is a review for uh, registered veterinary technicians and our students that are in our curriculum. This is involving, this review involves the kidneys and uh, blood pressure and um, anesthesia and how all that ties in. A uh, brief uh, physiology review, uh, of course this is the glomerulus, which is the functional unit of the kidney and uh, the blood supply comes in from the aorta through the renal ar to the renal artery and then uh, the blood supply that goes into the glomerulus itself is the afferent arterial carries that blood in through the glomerulus and it exits from the glomerulus uh, via the efferent arterial it's still oxygenated arterial blood but it exits through the efferent arterial and goes on to supply the rest of the kidney parenchyma. So when we talk about what are the things that happen with the kidney itself, um, when we have decreased blood pressure, whether it's under anesthesia or in a uh, awake patient or sick patient, there are a lot of mechanisms that are activated and a lot of organs um, become active in trying to increase the blood pressure. So the organs, the primary organs we want you to remember that are involved are the lungs and the kidney and the liver, the adrenal gland, the pituitary, which lives at the base of the brain, and of course the sympathetic nervous system. If I could spell sympathetic nervous system. We won't talk about the sympathetic nervous system, but uh, for this course and for general understanding, just know that it is involved in blood pressure regulation. The lungs play an important part because they secrete a enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. And the kidney, of course, is where all of the excretion and retention of electrolytes and water occurs. But it's also uh, important in that it secretes certain enzymes and compounds that affect uh, blood pressure regulation, primarily renin, but it also secretes a little bit of anti angiotensin converting enzyme as well. The liver plays a huge role, and the primary compound that it manufactures is angiotensin, angiotensinogen, which in the plasma gets converted to another compound called angiotensin, angiotensin 1, which in turn gets converted to another compound in the plasma called angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 plays a huge role in um, working on getting the blood pressure uh, back to normal or elevated and um, the cells that are affected primarily are the um, smooth muscle, muscle cells of the arteries, it also stimulates the adrenal gland, it also stimulates uh, the pituitary, And then, of course, it, it, it acts on the kidney cells. In the kidney, it helps the proximal tubules to regulate sodium. And this is what we want you to remember, that uh, the angiotensin II in the, in the tubules of the glomerulus regulates sodium, 
potassium, chloride, and water. If we be more specific, the sodium and the chloride, it increases retention of sodium and chloride and excretion of potassium and retention of water. When we retain sodium chloride or salt and retain water, that increases the blood volume and it increases the blood pressure. In the pituitary, angiotensin II causes the release of antidiuretic hormone. And we do want you to know this. Angiotensin II uh, is a key compound in the regulation of blood pressure via the kidneys and um, how it affects the pituitary, what hormone is secreted by the pituitary as a result of the presence of angiotensin II, and also um, how it affects the adrenal gland, what kind of compound is secreted as a result of angiotensin II being in circulation. And the, the compound that's excreted by the adrenal glands in the adrenal cortex specifically is aldosterone. So those are the big key points that we want you to know and remember. The lungs secrete the ACA, uh, anti, the anti, um, the angiotensin converting enzyme. Apologize for that, and that reacts on uh, angiotensin to produce angiotensin one. Renin acts on angiotensin 1 to produce angiotensin 2. And so this is all happening in the bloodstream, in the plasma. And, um, you know, when we talk about maintaining blood pressure, we want you to know that the kidney is a very important part of ma maintaining blood pressure. And so, in the big picture scheme of things, if the blood pressure is low and can't be modified, then our, the amount of blood that's being delivered to the kidney is decreased. And so that in turn blocks this whole system. And, um, and so there are some very profound negative effects that can happen if we're not paying attention to the depth of anesthesia and um, what our animal's doing and, um, you know, relative to the drugs that we're administering. So that concludes our part three of anesthesia, the kidney and blood pressure, and just a review about the different chemical reactions and enzymes that are involved with each organ and each um, glandular organ that we want you to remember so that you can have a good understanding of the body and how we can maintain the safety of our anesthetic patient.